this game, I'm guessing. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, highlight this name. Bring it back into the Liga Client. So yeah, so this is the game right here that you want me to uh, to check out. It's the uh, lane against the Fjord. All right, then let's just uh, get into it. I thought it was going to go. I forgot it had to like download first. Or like I told my WoW rates, I don't care if you break spell rotation to get out of the fire. Your DPS drops to zero when you're dead. <laughs> Is, is this true? I mean, if you if you die, you die. On top of that, dying just gives it just allocates a lot of gold to the enemy, and it denies you from experiencing gold yourself. So not dying is underrated. Like I carried my first game because I didn't die. I couldn't carry that other game because I think of my early early death in lane. I mean, one of them was actually just unavoidable. One of them at least literally just sat right here. I played way back here. And she somehow still managed to, to fucking thrust out a cocoon at me. Uh, on top of that, she flashed for me. I got the trade with the auto ignite here, but enough about that game. I eventually just got regained because I pushed up as Malphite hit six, and she just repeat ganked me. That was pretty much my old, my my big mistake. If I didn't do that, the game might have been a little different. But still, I feel like I couldn't say it's too much. Bot lane was going to be heavy, but this is a new game. We are playing. Or we were watching, sorry, this boy come up here and show us all how to beat a Fiora, I'm hoping. Uh, now, what I need to do is I need to put on a scoreboard because I want to see what you took. Yep, so I also do the same thing in two Fiora. Longsword is fine. Um, what can I see for runes here? So lethal tempo, bone, yeah, so, uh, so actually big, big thing right here is, uh, why the, uh, stack of, uh, alacrity, if you're running lethal tempo, uh, you should, uh, honestly, what I've been running is a uh, bloodline. I used to do this too. And then I started testing out bloodline because this actually doesn't like give you too much, um, with lethal tempo like this, you're, this is pretty much, you want to put your attack speed on the lethal tempo proc. So if you do that, you can then build the damage items and you don't need the alacrity to kind of like put into play. Instead, if you have like bloodline, you don't have to build an early lifesteal item and it helps out with your sustained in lane. Yeah, the macro plays, uh, if it just felt super out of my control, well, that's what we're gonna be looking at. We're always gonna be looking at ways that you can influence your game. Like I said, I lost this game but I'm taking, I mean, the, my early game, but I'm taking note, I still died to the Elise gank right here. If that didn't happen, the game could have been brand new. I would have had a, still a really good solid lead on the Malphite. Well, not that solid, a, a gold lead. Uh, honestly, a bit of an XP lead because he actually waited in his tower a little bit before coming back to lane. I managed to get the full shove in, so I got the experience. Anyways, uh, Bloodline here is... Uh, I should have looked at that in the OP.GG, open up the full rune page. I just assumed you were running uh, Bloodline. Some people run Tenacity. I don't think Tenacity is actually that strong on Trindamir. I feel like if he's going to get CC'd, he's going to get probably Tain CC'd anyway. So the only thing I would consider Tenacity for is maybe Teemo. But even then, I run Bloodline because you just run over the little roads. <clears throat> I know that's why you get CDR, but fuck me. Uh, Ultimate Hunter gets you 35 to 30 seconds cooldown at 18, which is nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really run Red Tree anymore secondary turn all right now one quick thing i want to also point out here is if they did invade the blue and they came around this corner you would have no vision here that's why uh fogged um and myself well fogged will actually sit like back here i don't mind going out to this plant i've only had one game where they actually walked all the way around here to the blue uh so another little fun thing you can do if you think that the top lane is leasing um is you can if you walk out early with your minions right say you have an idea that the top lane is uh top laner is leashing on red right and you're on this side of the map walk out in front of your minions right stand like right here says shy of the tower vision and when these minions come out you can drag them into this brush and it will allow and, and you can deny them one minion of experience right away I did this uh, just a couple games ago, so I can look back in a replay and I can show you what I mean by that. 
and it's really really cool because you can then get the wave to auto push to you and this is good for a couple of reasons one you don't have to try to like burn an early ward here going oh shit oh shit they started red am i getting level two ganked because uh, sometimes that happens especially with like elise jungles or uh freaking uh what's another good one that can just like freaking walk up level two i don't know there's a couple of them zin zin's a good one zin will be a tempo ganker i know what you mean it pushes back to you and it denies a minion too potentially because the minions group up yeah uh it, exactly if you do it right you should be able to do both of them uh provided like if they do a, like a hard leash like even like here i think if you did it she's leaving at at 60 health so maybe you wouldn't have been able to get the uh the, the minion denial, but it's still really solid. Now, another tease you can do, oh, it looks like you're going for it. Oh, no, you didn't. You backed off, is you can sit in the tri-bush. So when they walk over, you just freaking, you just hit them. You can do an auto spin here, auto spin out. Uh, I've seen Ranger X do this before uh, in his games. So he sits right here. He doesn't bother wording. He just waits, right? And then when the enemy laner just kind of just walks in all willy-nilly, just going, hur, 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 I'm going to my lane, you, uh, you tease him. And, uh, I, I mean, it's really good. Say if you were Darius, right? Now, if you were against Darius, you could actually expect this from Darius because Darius know that they have the level 1 advantage because, well, you know, they're just going to put stacks on you and run at you if you try to fight them with no fury. Um, yeah. Yeah, Twitch Pantheon, yeah, those are both uh, Tempo Junglers. So they kind of have to Tempo Junglers. Both those Junglers have to Tempo Jungle. Otherwise, they just they just fall right off because they can't farm. Um, but he, right here, you could have gone for an early tease. But let's see what you do when you get to lane. You kind of just... Okay, so, so you're going to auto right away, even though you know that the Jungler is topside. So, like, look where... So he's actually going... So, yeah. So if you had a word... So because of the word here, you know it, he can't gank this way. But again, this is why I don't like really like early warding for level twos. Because unless like you really know that they're going to like level two. Because now you're pushing the wave. And the jungler could just walk up this way too. Especially if like since Fiora saw the word, she could communicate with the jungler that... That he can go around for the gank. So you get level 2 prio, but then you don't do anything with it. You're kind of just letting those minions die. Oh, hey, what's up, bear? I got an unexpected uh, consultant with us today. My kitty bear is going to be helping me review your game. I hope that is okay. Bear will uh, be giving me another set of eyes into this replay. So uh, two eyes, or I should say four eyes, is always better than two. So we will be able to see everything that happens and help you out. Yeah, so this is an ugly spot. If you're going to let Fiora establish lane dominance, don't listen to Bear. He's super aggro. <laughs> uh, she is uh, very aggressive. All right. So, yeah. If you're going to let the um, the Fiora like, get the lane prio, it would have been much better of you to do the early uh, techniques that I shared because you, give it, you had to give up a bit of CS, and unnecessarily you could have given up that CS because... The minions would have done the job for you. What's up? You want a kissy? All right. All right. There you go. <laughs> Is my coaching assistance not good enough? <laughs> oh, it, it just needs more duck picks. That's all. If we had more duck picks with your coaching assistance, I'm sure more LP would be gained. All right. So here's this Q healing right now. Mm, yes. All right. Good kitty. Yeah, you have to give up this wave because Fiora has prio. So I've actually been playing this super differently. So after this game, I'm going to show you how I've been playing the wave and what I've been doing against Fiora. And uh, maybe we can talk about which which way is better. Because I think right here... Okay, so she took out the tower aggro, which is uh, kind of trollsy. Also, what did she take for her runes here? I want to see. So she took Conqueror. So this is actually... Uh, not as strong of a laning rune. Oh, yes, Kitty. I know you love kisses. Grasp is definitely the rune for Fiora, I think, for lane. But this is very strong if she can scale. All right, she's kind of just inting you by taking so many tower shots. That was kind of troll. So now she's, like, less health. 
She kind of is just throwing this for you. All right, so you're gonna go in. All right. Well, you just you win this. All right. Well, that was wild AF. All right. Let me see. Let me break this down. All right. Start from the beginning. So you spin in, which is really really aggressive, uh, because you spin in, and then you just kind of auto attack the parry. So you get parried. Grass Fjord can die in a fire. She so flashed out to get the vital here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So she gets the crit on the vital there, but then you immediately answer with the crit. Now, so here's here's the problem here, right? If you didn't RNG crit that, you would have lost here. Wait, did you cancel that auto? Slower. I think you canceled an auto there, my dude. So again, this is as slow as possible that we can break this down. So you kind of hit her in the face. You W. So her next auto is reduced damage. You cancel an auto because you go to move. And then lethal tempo is procced. So you flash auto her there because you got creep blocked, I'm guessing, right? Oh, yeah, and she also dashed away. And you pathed back. Yeah. All right. Hmm. That was really messy. That was very messy. You you got the kill, which is really good. Um, And that's important. But I feel like you only got that kill because of that one RNG crit. Did the Q heal cancel auto or does it not? Uh, no, you can uh, you can Q heal while so it's actually a cool Trinomir technique. Cries if you Q heal while auto attacking. Okay, if you have your Fury Bar right, you can still use that for your critical strike chance, and then you can Q heal for that damage. And then on top of that, or I shouldn't say, you Q heal for your Fury Bar. Okay, so during a crit, right, you can get the crit animation, right? and Q heal, then you your animation will come out, you will attack, and you'll get another you'll get a point of fury right then and there, which is really good. Now the attack speed slow is really hard for me to orb walk with. Yeah. Well that's that's it. Like uh, when you auto attack the parry like that, it's uh it's kinda bad news bears unless uh, you have the uh, the health and the damage and sustain behind it. So like Auto attacking a parry before you have ultimate is usually a death wish, and even then, it's it can be pretty bad, uh, cause she can just kite you out. So the issue here is, you don't want to like you forced that engage like pretty hard without thinking about like what her answers were. So if we go back here, right now she took two things of tower shots. So like right here. This is, I would have thought about this differently, right? I would have definitely tried to bait, like, to bait the parry. Think about that. If you can bait the parry, then you know you win. Instead, you let her Q, you, you let her, like, poke you down. So now the health is closer to even. I got to get this tap box out of the way. I don't know why I left this here. Bam. 609 to 596. So you had a really good health advantage going in here, okay? Here are you, 689. Here she, 508. You're almost 200 health over her. She walks here, and you and you have a vital facing forward. So at this point, the best thing to do is actually to do two things. One, back up and just reset the vital, which is beta. Or two, which is alpha, and I'm much more of a fan of, is a spin on her. And the reason why you'd spin on her right here is because she must be looking for that vital. So one of the things, we're going to bring out the notes here. If I if my uh, computer will let me here, notepad. There we go. And if Bear will let me, Bear, I gotta bring out my notepad, bud. Oh, oh, you're gonna claw me. Okay, no, oh, kitty. Then my notepad's important, bud. <clears throat> so we're gonna just go all the way down. <laughs> so <laughs> I forgot we have a new um, style of format for our coaching. 
It is called Wisdom's Wisdom. And this is going to be, here we go, for, uh, we're going to use it by uh, Twit's name because it's it'll be easier for me to uh, remember it. SN Mercy. And you have an underscore, so. Okay. So for whiz don'ts, hmm, how do I actually put this into one of these? Okay, I want to say whiz do's here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say think about what your laner wants to do, and either deny it or answer to it. So Fiora here, okay. I'm gonna save. I need to bring back up my editor because what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to close this. There we go. Would it be fair to say Grass Fiora would have won that fight? Uh, I think so, actually. Well, I think Grass Fiora would have been making better trades here. The health would not have been this high with Grass Fiora. But also, she's not actually building it up on the wave, so I don't know. Grass Fiora would have been, would have played this this lane a little differently. I think Grass Fiora, if you play passively into Grass Fiora, you wouldn't be in this position. But because she played kind of weirdly, she shoved in, and then when she went to poke you, she also took tower aggro from you. So... It's kind of hard to say. I think, honestly, if fighting here, landing parry, Conqueror Fiora wins, actually. But for making the trades, for just trying to whittle you down for the lane to then get to a point where she can just forcefully beat you up, Grasp Fiora wins. It's the same. Th it would be the same argument like, does Lethal Tempo Trindamir beat... You know, like beat like, uh, is it better than grasp Trendemir into Jax? Right? We both know what like how Trendemir has to lane. The thing is, grasp helps the Trendemir in the lane better than the Lethal Tempo does. So out of lane, Lethal Tempo is, of course, we understand it's more damage. The same thing here, Conqueror does more damage in an all in, but you can build grasp on minions, so it's just better for lane. So, it's hard to say. I think Conqueror would have... Uh, I'll stop distracting from the coaching. It's a good question, though. And we want to go into these theories. But here, uh, we want to definitely break down... Oh, I had that sped way up. Okay, so again, right here. Your laner is thinking about the vital here. You have to be thinking about... Holy shit, she just took two tower shots. I want to, like, fucking kill her. So, like, that? I, 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 don't, I just don't understand why you, like, let her do that. Like, I think you're just respecting Fiora too much. Like, you barely won this. And the only reason you won this was because you got an RNG crit. To be honest, that's actually what's going through my head. But I was slow to react. I was trying to get her to use her Q and then spin through it. Yeah, I think it's better to just spin through right away. It's actually, I think it's hard to react to Fiora's abilities. The only one that you can kind of react to is parry. But think about it like this, right? You have to react to it if you know it's coming. So you can't directly just look at parry and then immediately react to it unless, you're, unless you like know that it's coming. So here's, here's what we're going to go back to the notes for. All right. So, again, think about what your laner wants to do and either deny it or answer to it, okay? If Fiora wants vital, do you walk away or fight her for it? Still, we take those. Oh, we absolutely take those. <laughs> it was the fucking, the filthiest crit of my life. Now, what happens here, though, is she has to TP, right? Oh, she's going to, oh. Now, did you see this? Wait. Okay. 
Oh, she's a dumbass. <laughs> Wait. No way. There's no way. There's no way in God's... Oh, my God. What am I watching? Yo, this Fiora is griefing, my dude. I can't believe this Fiora just left a full wave of minions under tower to try and just stop your recall. So this is why greeting for kills is bad. We absolutely take those. I think the last statement is false. If she takes one auto from me, she dies. Same with me. I had lethal tempo. Also, I didn't get any crits prior. So that in terms of RNG, it was nothing unusual. But what was prior? Let's actually just go back and then again, like, look, let's look at like how many like what was our rng like manipulation then like how often were you actually auto attacking her and auto attack so there's a crit on the minions we can use minion modifier so you just got two crits there so right now you're actually like super lucky on the rng so that was a regular auto attack right so now you should have like in theory like a one in three chance to get a crit okay So you get that like one and three right there. So you kind of got it. It was still very, very close. Like how many auto attacks did you actually land on Fiora now? Now, now we're going to count that. Like if we're talking about RNG math, you still never really want to trust on RNG. Like I understand you want to go for crits because crits help you. But if you're banking on a crit to win your fight, that's uh, that's not what you want to do. I don't go into fights thinking, oh, I'm going to crit this guy and he's going to die. That's not a good idea. Wisdom, read your chat. There's a notepad in front. We literally didn't see anything. Ah, I always forget to, to stick my notepad out. All right. So, again, hold on. We're going to count the crits, okay? Now, we counted that there was two here, two crits on the minions, okay? And then one regular crit. Now, here we go. Now we're counting the, the autos on the champion. One. Now you auto attack a parry. Okay, so that's one, two, and that's three. One, two. And then another regular auto after a Q heal, so that wasn't a crit. So in five auto attacks, you got one crit. That was like five auto attacks, and you got a crit with full fury. So, you could say that RNG was, like, that was supposed to happen. But, like, even then, like, were you expecting, like, another crit? Like, I, I just feel like it was just way too close. Like, that only, you only won that because of that one crit. If you didn't get that one crit, uh, it would have been, it would have been Dunsies. So, five autos, one crit out of five. I think that's uh, pretty standard, no? I, I mean, it can be. I just don't think that's a good way to to think about it. I know if you if so depending on what what kind of Trinomir player you ask, for me personally, okay, I think if you're banking on critical strikes, I think you're that's not a good thing to do. Like yes, you're playing an RNG reliant champion with crits, but if you need one crit to win a fight, and you only have 35% shot to do it. Do you go for it? That's like, you want to go skydiving, right? But there's a 35% chance your parachute won't work. Do you still go skydiving? I wouldn't. It's just... <laughs> YOLO! <laughs> yeah, I didn't go into the fight begging to critter to death. I just played the fight optimally, but the crit is normal is what I'm saying. The crit is kind of normal enough. It's still... It could have been abnormal enough, though. I mean, like... What if you crit her during the parry, then? I mean, I don't know. See? That's the thing. What if your crit was during the parry? What happens then? Right? Like, the RNG math, you can't rely on that 100%. You could... It's the same thing for Zax, right? You could, uh, you could crit a Counter-Strike. So... Wait, I didn't even look at the animation during the parry. It was a regular, it was a re regular wet noodle hit. So, anyways, we're, we're speeding things up. We're gonna watch this Fiora, this very sad Fiora, just lose this entire wave, which is beautiful. So far, 
the only reason you're winning this is because the Fiora is, uh, honestly, this is griefing. Like, you got the, you, you got this, which was fantastic. And then you managed to get out, which was fantastic. But it's, I'm going to say this is more on fault of the Fiora than it is to the credit of what you've done to outplay her. So we're going to slow it down a little bit because we want to watch at these interactions. You're trying to build up Fury. All right. So you get level six here and you just go in, which is great. You get hit by parry. So this is when Ghost here would have been really good. Okay. Oh, well, what is she doing? All right. So we got two crits right off the back. Now... Let's let's watch this in slow mo now. So you didn't execute the cannon, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, you're going for the level six advantage. We walk into the parry. So that was a good spin right there. Why did she walk back down here? Okay. Well, yeah. This viewer didn't respect your XP advantage. It's like she completely forgot that you were going to hit level 6 first. Like, look at this big wave coming in. Does she not understand that once you farm it, she's gonna, you're going to hit level 6? Like, this was just a basic level 6 advantage, so it was very well played. There really wasn't anything Fiora could do here. You got the slow there, which is actually great. It doesn't really matter too much that you walk into the parry there. You didn't uh, panic R there, which was good. You spin through all those minions to build up your Fury, which was great. But here again, right? Look at, look at the wet noodle. It's getting really close. Your ult is going to expire soon. You get those two crits there, but that was honestly still very, very close despite that. Those are some nasty crits. That one was well played. It was good. It was good that you went for it. And even then, it was still freaking dummy close. Fiora is just ugly. I itemized really poorly. I sort of went Seeker Griefs. Uh, I think the Tiamat is actually really good here. I love building Tiamat. I, I actually Tiamat rushed into Fiora more. Even like with the lead, that was actually like, this was actually, the, I think with this item, this actually helped you win because this gave you base AD, dude. Your wet noodles were actually matching her noodles. Your, your noodles were not wet anymore. They were like, they were kind of like, they were actually like, they were wet, but they were like damp noodles. Think of them like, you wrung them out in like pool water and they, they soaked up like a ton of water. They're more like dry rags. So like you've ever had like, you have like siblings, you know, and you just, they just kind of like spank you with like a wet towel. That's what you were doing to her. So you were like packing some punts. She was like, ow, those aren't really noodles anymore. Maybe you like lobbed some like floaties on the end of the noodles. So like they were like, they were like, you were just having a, <laughs> come on. You love, you love my analogies. I'll send duck pics. Anyway. Uh, we take those noodles. I mean, uh, we take those uh, those trades. Fiora now has to be has to make the walk of shame back to lane with no TP. See, my issue right now is that even though I had item advantage and level advantage with my R, I still almost lost that. Yeah. It, so it's just because uh, I mean, you you still played that really well. I think that was a fight to absolutely go for, and uh, but the the reason why. Okay, it was close as it was was because of two things. Okay, one of them. Okay, was a Fiora's almost ability to kite you. Okay, if she was able to kite you there any any harder, uh, you would have burned out your ultimate. Okay, now two. The other reason was because you walked into parry. 
mind you, you walked into parry willingly because, hey, you had level six. As I said earlier, that's kind of like a who gives a fuck. You're just kind of giving the middle finger to Fiora. But that's still something you want to try and avoid if you can. So it was going to be close. You kind of had to have thought that it was going to be close. That was still something that you win. You landed your slow. You got your spins. You got your autos. Like The spin through all those minions was actually beautiful. I can't compliment you enough on that. We're actually going to bring up the notes. And we're going to say, um, Wizdu's level 6 advantage... Superb. There. All right. Really, it was. This was good. Um, she was still almost able to cut you, but you landed everything very nicely. For, for taking Ignite, you were still able to kind of... Now, if you took Ghost, right? That wouldn't have been that close. But also, we're going to go into how I play with Ghost later. So we can see the uh, the differences. So now... Do, do, do. Uh, so yeah, you're going you're gonna to be here because the lane's going to push back to you. This is wonderful. So now you're you're in a really good job. You're in a really good position, not just for yourself. Um, what's the extra dagger for? Is it because you're going to build static shift? At wisdom notepad, thank you. I need to get like a third monitor because basically I just I drag it out of the way so it's not on my screen, but then I forget it's not on my OBS so. If I had something else I could use to figure that out, I could do that. All right. Uh, what happened to your hack? Did he just die in his own jungle right there? Because I was going to say, this was good for you because uh, your jungler is coming topside and she's no flash, but then they just kind of just freaking catch him. Yikes. Your hack room's having a very rough game. That's okay. What has your heck room done before here? Looks like he's already into the jungle once and then he's into mid and then he's into the jungle again. Okay, so you, you can't really play with your jungler, which is unfortunate. It says it just be like that when you play top sometimes. Yeah, he's definitely. <clears throat> Damn. Cat got wrecked. So she has to respect your advantage here. This is good. I like the uh, the slow uh, play here. Now we're going to speed things up maybe. So you fake like you're going to ward there, but then you don't ward it? See, I don't know what that helps. Because with somebody like Echo... Uh-oh. So you got hit by another... Okay. So you got hit by another parry, but, I mean, you had R. So uh, there wasn't really much she was going to do here. All right, so we're going to watch it again. All right. She shouldn't be trying to trade with you with minions. This Fiora, I don't think, really knows what she's doing. Like, when she's, like, trying to, like, hit you, like, there. Like, why is she trying to hit you with all these minions under here? Because now the minions are focusing her. She's eating so much minion damage right here. This Fiora is shooting herself in the foot. This Fiora is, like, losing lane. And she's like, why am I losing lane? Pow! Ah! Oh, my foot. Why is this happening to me? <laughs> Seriously, though, I could have gotten tabbies, though. Wait, you would have built tabbies into Fiora? Nah. Why would you build tabbies? Well, you don't need to build tabbies into Fiora. You want to abuse your attack speed, your Trindomir. You do more damage than Fiora. Building tabbies into Fiora is, like, probably, like, the the, bit, the betas thing you could do. Build the Xerxes. The Xerxes is a great buy. 
Fiora, Kate, Echo? What, what, what if, no. Why would it, if you're getting, if, if you're actually worried about getting hit by Caitlyn auto attacks as Tryndamere, uh, that means that you're not actually focused on trying to kill Caitlyn as Tryndamere. This, two hits, this, this, like five, six crits, maybe a seventh shot, you know? Like, this is, this is excellent for dealing with this, killing this. I don't, this is not a Tabby's game. If it was like maybe all AD and you were dealing with like a Reigns top, I would say yes. But I, I completely disagree with the uh, Tabby's call here. All right, so right here. She's shooting herself in the foot. <laughs> Make it stop. Why is he beating me up? All right, and then she aggressively parries. Which I think you still get hit by, but you make the alpha decision to go, Bits, I have all, I am Trindamir. Alright, and that was good. Kate's headshots are beyond BS. I've actually never like suffered like a Kate headshot that I've been like, oh, I need to build tabbies for Kate headshots. I don't, I don't know, dude. I think it's my turn to ask. What are you smoking? In all honesty. <laughs> I've had headshots that took 80 AP. Yeah. Well, maybe from like Fed Kates that are like three level, like times your level. But like, and they're using their seventh shot. But if you're also in that position, I don't think uh, Tabby's at that point is going to get you out, my dude. That just weakens your uh, your Tabby's in that instance. That honestly, still like, what is that going to? How is that going to help you in that? Then how does if if it's doing like that? How do Tabby's help you? You need to focus on killing people, as Trindamir. If Tabby's help you stay alive, maybe. But if that's not going to help against that. Theoretically, in a lane this far ahead, shouldn't she be out-leveling Kate enough that the tabbies are irrelevant? Exactly. Exactly. I'm not... You're good, Trinamir. You want to alpha tad this. This is not a tabbies game. All AD with a poke top, I'd consider it. I've got I've gotten tabbies into, like, Jace top, like, Zed mid lane, um, you know, Zyvan, Zungle, and then, like, Luce and Braum, right? Because, like... Holy shit, they're all AD. Like, just... Oh, what is she doing? Okay, I wanted to see a harder trade there, but unfortunately, it just didn't happen. Uh, the jungle is bot side again still, so you can just keep doing what you're doing up here. Honestly, this Fiora just kind of... Oh, are you serious? Wait, why are you respecting that? Are you, okay. You see everybody down here. Why did you respect that TP? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. As soon as I saw the teleport, I was like, what is this Fiora player doing? You're right here, a full level on her with full fury. I don't care what motherfucking item she buys. I think I didn't see Echo on the map. You should have just seen him bot side. Uh, let me double check, though. I could be wrong. I thought we saw him bot side through the ward. We can absolutely uh, figure this out, though. Did we see Echo on the map? Oh, we actually don't see Echo right now. No. We see Diana. So we know... So this is actually scary. You don't actually have any vision up over here. So, yeah, see? Echo's right there. So Echo's bot side. Yeah, the only reason this is scary is because you actually, you did Krugs without getting any, like, deep vision over here. You didn't put, like, a pink over here or maybe, like, a pink here. Like, if you have priority, you want to try and ward to, like, keep that priority going. Uh, I think not warding right now is, uh, like, like, what's, like, you have a pink ward here. Like, I understand you pinked here to help with the level 6 invade. Uh, it's a level 6 invade. Level 6, uh, all in. But, like... 
I, th I think getting another ward out would have been nice. Because then you wouldn't have had to respect this. Like, Echo's right on the map right there. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Unfortunate. You could have made, like, a really... Like, you could have punished this Fiora and made, just, like, crushed her hopes and dreams. So now, even if, like... So you let her TP in and you back off. But then, I'm guessing now you notice that Echo's bot. So that's why you're going to proxy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I would do this, I guess. Like, Fiora's just, like, camping under the tower. Just take some Echo Jungle. This is a really good idea to just get yourself ahead. Now, again, you could ward here. Are you going to go gank middle? Okay, nice. Uh, you flash for that? Hmm. I don't know if doing that was necessarily worth. Like, it's kind of good, but... I mean, let's see. What, I don't know. The gold went to heck. You get a red. I guess it's okay. You have a lead on Fjord. I guess that was good. I just, I'm just i just not sure if like the flash was needed. I guess it was needed just because like she was able to leap away and... You must have burned D or something. We got shut down on her and plates. Yeah, that's definitely worth then. All right. Yeah, she. Yeah, she had. Uh, yeah, she's big KDA. I was just concerned because like then it gives like the Fiora had the ability to farm top, but you were able to get out of it and still shove it another wave. That tower was hella low. I would have looked to take this. That's first brick on the map, dude. Fiora just backed. You're up top already, shoving in. I would have looked to take that brick. If you see Fiora, you back off. I mean, you just took Echo's red, so you know Echo couldn't have been topside. And now they already... Wait, they already took bot brick. Never mind. So it wouldn't have been first brick. Unfortunate. So hold on. Let me see if you could have done... When did they take bot brick then? So yeah, yeah, because you can't unfortunately get top brick. Hmm, I don't know, top brick or uh, yeah, I think the shutdown was worth. Okay, so they get first brick. You get a shutdown and you take red. That's that's good. Okay. Anyways, so what do you do here? So you see Caitlyn top, but you go top anyway. So, I kind of disagree with this. Because I just don't know what you're going to be able to do to Caitlyn. And, like, anybody with the lack of, like, side vision. You step on a trap around the corner. Now you're no flash. You get hooked. Yeah, I think this was not good. So you have to think, all right? You have a very fed bot lane with a Thresh coming up here. You don't have enough map control on this side, right? And Fiora is pushing in bot. The best thing to do is to just back recall and just answer Fiora. I wouldn't have tried fighting this up here. I would have tried to match Fiora instead. Lucent was bought and he wasn't giving me from Lucent. Yeah, you that's you just flip on the bird. Cry's happy. Yeah, Cry's is absolutely right. You've got Tiamat and you've got the AD to just spin through, take the casters, and just auto Tiamat the uh, melees. What's he gonna do? Just flip him the bird. Tell him to go fuck himself. Tell him he sucks. Be toxic. I don't care. Do what you gotta do. That a that AD carry is a sad Lucent. He picked Lucent and he's losing. And uh he has to just kind of just eat shit. He has to go farm mid lane. What, what's he going to do? Like, go bot and answer Fiora? Exactly. You just have to let him know, like, where your place is. <laughs> Look at me. I am the carry now. Yeah, that's kind of what you have to do. I, I am in agreement with that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think being nice to Lucian here is good. 
Like, so because Lucian is farming safely bought and but having to leave because he can't match Fiora, you have you that puts you in the position to go for this really risky play without flash. Now, if you had flash here, right? I would consider it, but you used flash mid to get a shutdown. When you committed to using the flash mid lane, okay? That puts you out of the picture for team fights for the next four or five minutes while your flash is down. Think of your flash as your agency for team fighting ability. All right. So what I always tell people, right, is if based on your summoners, okay, and your abilities up, you give yourself like a raw like rank score for how useful you are in team fights. If you are all sums up as Tindemir, the best you are for utility is like maybe a seven. And if you have ghost, you got a solid eight. Tindemir is like not that strong in team fighting. If he does not have his flash, he is his agency drops to like maybe a four. He just he just can't do anything. He can't get in. He's or, or he rather he can get in, but he can't get out. Or he can get out, but he can't get in. Like he's kind of stuck. I would have I would have definitely uh, denied it from. Uh, I, I would not have gone for this play. This was high risk. You're also trying to play make with. Two people who have been feeding this game, right? You told me that not that this guy was feeding. He's doing a little bit better now. But, like, w I mean, this guy clearly just doesn't get it, dude. He's 0-4 Nautilus. You don't want to be playing with him. You have to choose who you play make carefully. So we're going to bring the notes back up, and we're actually going to put that right in the notes. Okay. You see, I'm not sure you noticed, but Hecarim is pretty strong right now. Hecarim is strong, but I don't think he was even there. I think it was this Nautilus, right? Yeah, you had Nautilus and Cat was coming up here, but that's like your only forms of CC, and you have absolutely no vision, and you're down flash. You walk around this corner right into a Caitlyn trap. This right here... This right here was your warning. Caitlyn was being gentle. She lets you know, don't do this. You don't, you don't want this. Look what's going down, dude. Your Nautilus is already down. Cat, trying to get something started. But look where you are. You aren't even a spin away from anybody. You got to keep You got to keep moving. And then Thresh with like the Master Flay. And then there's four people here, and you don't have flash. This was not the place to be. At Wisdom, no pet. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm the worst. We're just going to play it back in slow-mo so you guys get my point. All right. This right here. You see, your Nautilus is already dead. Your, your mid just got rooted. That flay was actually not even intended for you, and that still prevented you from getting in on that. This was this was not good. I, you needed to let this one go. Next emote bat should include an angry notepad. <laughs> Uh, I did actually get uh, a status update um, on a couple new emotes. I need the so the sub goal is going to be for my next emote. Uh, so if you're curious as to why the 50 sub goal unlocks my next emote, um, and we do have a uh, a wisdom tilt emote. Um, I also have another emote that uh, we might put in later, but I think the wisdom tilt one I'm gonna put in first. Uh, either way, I'm gonna. I have another emote in the bait in the bank. That's my cat just jumped through my uh, little like cabinet where I keep my my DVD player and like some movies, and I don't even know how he fit through there. But anyway, call it repad. <laughs> but anyways, I yeah, uh, I disagree with this fight. You need it. You need to just be down here. That that gave him shutdown gold. How much was your shutdown gold? I missed it. 200 it's not much but still yeah. 
Yeah, if Hecarim was, like, there earlier, I would think about it. But Hecarim is only strong because he's kind of, like, cleaning up. Like, he's getting into it, but he's still not, like, he's not fully there yet. He's not ready to just, like, plow into Fiora. He's not, like, actually, like, he has Trinity, he has, you know, Skirmishers, and he's got Boots. But, like, he's, he's getting there. He's still not there. It should be a notepad with a Trinity Helm on top of it. <laughs> All right. Enough about the notepad jokes, though. We need to talk about what this Trinomir needed to do. And that was prevent Fiora from just taking tier 2 down there. So anyways, this is weird because your cat answered to the... To the, di uh, to the Fiora and then you went mid. And we have no vision of anybody. We are just walking in blind. Yeah, but see, this is this is why, like, looking back on the game, sometimes you don't think as to like what really hit, like went on here. It seems obvious in hindsight, but you know, sometimes it's not obvious. Yeah, you unfortunately can't fight that Diana. That Diana is really, really strong. If you went bot earlier and didn't give yourself up, you would be put into a position where you're level 12 and maybe you could tussle. Diana would not have been as fed because Diana would have only gotten maybe... I mean, maybe Diana wouldn't even have gotten Nocturne because you weren't trying to pressure top. I don't know. There's, there's so many things. I feel like Nocturne was just going to feed there anyway. He just, he just kind of has that uh, feeding vibe going on. All right, so you need to look out for um, Diana still. Yep, so she hides over there. Take a tower shot for that. Shut down. Well, that's really good. So unfortunately, they didn't get Echo, but... All right, so during this whole thing, why is, uh, why is Fiora not being answered? So you just saw... Hold on. So... You see Luce in top, this is good, but then you see Diana, and you realize you can't answer Diana. So you go to walk middle. Okay, now you see Fiora top. This is this is what you do to you here. No, this is you don't go back bot side. You understand Lucin can't push into Fiora. You understand that you can't push into Diana. However, you can push into Fiora. Therefore, you must continue the trek into the top lane. You going back bot lane doesn't do anything here. You needed to answer the Fiora so you could get that lane priority. Even if it meant spinning all the way across the map so you could get here by the time the wave cra crashes here, you'd be getting the experience and you'd be in the right spot for a priority. By the time you do that, Diana would maybe be here, but she has to still go all the way to this tier 3 before she gets that. Because I thought the Infernal was more important than the Tower. I don't know if that's an Infernal you can even contest, though. Look at their team. Is that really an Infernal that we're going to try to throw the game over? I feel like when the score is like this, right? When, like, you have fed carries that you're still down flash on. You can't really fight for it. How soon for the Infernal, by the way? I need an objective timer. Uh... So next Infernal is 30 seconds and you don't have Flash? Yeah. So next Infernal is in 30 seconds and you won't have Flash for another 30 seconds after it comes back up. I think Spinning Top would have been your best bet here. And I know that seems lame and it's just like, well, it's kind of it's just stereotypical. It's just AFK split was Trinidad. But like, you can't split into Diana. You can't help your team fight here. You can't really secure this Drake with your team. You should just, your best bet is to just deny Fiora from still pushing. <laughs> it's a stereotype for a reason. I, I mean, kind of. It's a stereotype because sometimes, like, low level Trindamir is just, like, actually AFK split push. Like, they just completely ignore, like, wards and like oh there's five people here it doesn't matter i'm trying to mirror there's just 1v5 it's like it's stereotype because of like how memed it is that turn will just go off by himself 
but there are times when you need to be that guy that is just always Trindamir by himself. If you aren't, then, well, you aren't getting anything. This is what's happening right now. Because now Diana just comes back out. We got to leave. I'm surprised Diana didn't like still try to like chase you. Anyways, you're trying to ping a, a infer an infernal. I mean, you managed to get it, but So right now, you have Flash, you understand that the team is going to try to contest for Scuttle, but you're going to go split bot for Fjord. So like this is a time where if you were going to group, this is when you group because you have both your, your summoners. So therefore, you can provide a lot of utility to your team because you can just flash on somebody that's actually busted. Trindamir has the best just flash smack somebody in the game i don't know there's no like actual like uh, like official lingo for that but you get what i'm saying my team is still sort of relevant we have cat heck power spikes yeah oh nice so you just go off here Alright, so that's really good. That's like actually very good for your team. But now, why are you doing all of Hecarim's jungle when your wave is this far up? Alright. You made us to get bot. That's good. So you take red. So now, what you're doing right here is very good. Um, is not much. I mean, you could try grouping middle, but I think you just have to pray that your team can answer or try to stop them from doing Baron right now. So you managed if your hex was chunks was so loose and I was on the side of the mini map. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So going bot there is good for killing Fiora, but it's bad if you're trying to secure this Baron or deny the enemy team Baron. And reminder, you had both of your you had your flash I think up right. No, when did you use your flash last then? Oh. You still had your flash down from your last engagement with Fior? Why are you flashing on Fior if she's 0 3?
I was wondering what was the problem. All right. So my replay just crashed. Don't send. We're just going to get it back up. Uh, we're on the right profile. This one. Awkward league crash, but we'll get back into it. Flaccid River for the double. Okay. I see. Yeah, because you got Diana here. Sorry, I'm like suddenly just like, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. You fl Okay. Yeah. No, that was the single. You. So right here. Nah. I don't think this is worth. And the reason why I don't think this is worth is because she's 0-3. What gold do you get from flashing on this Fiora right here? Kill the Riddick? <laughs> What's up, clone? I don't think there's anything to get from flashing from this. A double? That's what he gets? No. this is a, He's flashing for a single kill. He hasn't killed anybody yet. He kills Diana afterwards. But he's flashing for the single kill. He did not need to flash for that. He just gets this from being in the right place at the right time. He actually didn't have to ult for that. It doesn't look like it. Do my promos for me? Thanks, bud. <laughs> I don't do promos for people. All right. We're going to go to the whiz don'ts. All right, so we bring the notepad back up, and we put this in the whiz don'ts. Don't flash for 0-3, peeps. Not worth gold, unless it secures an objective. Flashing for the Fiora... I'm just going to capitalize that because it irks me. Uh, when she wasn't worth gold, uh, didn't give you anything. You later got the Diana, but Fiora... Oh, gosh, I just used lowercase for everything. It's all right. I was speed typing here. But Fiora could not have helped with that anyway because she was low HP. I know all the top laners in and diamonds just use Kansas City champs. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's it's cause they're good champions. That's why. If you wanna if you wanna like normally good champions perform better than bad champions, let's be honest. I understand all those champions are like frustrating, but that's why they're there, because they're they're pretty strong. Alright. The flash. I got the tower off that kill. Okay, so again, you could have gotten the tower without killing her, right? Or if she TPs to it, then it's fine. But you you would still have gotten the the Diana. I don't think and like it's a tier one like like so not having your flash right. Remember, think about your agency. What's happening over here? All right, you have nine two Diana, which you later kill, and you didn't even need flash for. But you have six two Caitlyn. You have you have other people, and you have a pretty strong echo. You have other things that you want to save your summoners for. So, I don't think flashing for that Fiora was the best best play right there. I don't think it was worth. That's that's my final analysis. I don't think that flash was worth. 
I mean, does she come back here and TP? She does. So it didn't actually even give you the tower. It's hindsight, though, but in general, though, in general, if if somebody's like, if you're already beating so bad on somebody, right, and they just flash from you, then you go, great, you have flash advantage now, and you leave it at that. You don't flash for them. Flash for the things that are worth. This was not worth. That flash, let's, let's count, let's look at the gold for that flash. This is something that I have to get through too. So like, don't think I'm like doing this like, I am Mr. Wiz, Mr. Know-it-all. Like, I catch myself doing this stuff too. But this is important if we want to improve. We have to remember what's actually worth. Hold on, I missed the gold for that. Where would I see the gold? We got plus 20 from Triumph. Okay, so it's right. So it appears on you. I thought it would appear on the uh, enemy champion, but it appears on you. Yeah, 274 gold. That's actually kind of a lot of more gold than I thought you were going to get from that, if I'm being honest. I didn't think you were going to get that much. But still, I don't think it was worth because you still didn't get the tower. And you have 550 gold on Diana, which you def which you get without flash. But then you also have this Caitlyn and the Echo that are probably worth like 300 or maybe 350. So. She has 125 CS. That should, I don't think that affects how much gold you get. Wisdom, the Fjord kill beta Diana. There's literally no way she would have gotten this Fjord. No, 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 no. You guys are thinking about that all wrong. The, the Fiora was roaming in anyway. Killing the Fiora didn't bait Diana. Diana was already going there, okay? Flashing, I'm still going to say, my, my, if you, you guys can disagree with me, but like I think in all honesty, flashing for a 0-3 player that you can just kill no problem at any time was fine. Plus, you don't get the tower. You still get the Diana, okay? Like, the Diana kill was still going to be there. Like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner later, it did not matter if this Fjord died here or not. So, anyways. She comes back, and now you don't have Flash. And later, when your team tries to contest Baron, you're over here on bot side. You take a red, you recall. And then you go back bot side, even though they have tons of top pri prio. Now your AFK is splitting bot. But now you can't roam in for your Baron. You push up here, but you can't do anything. Your mid's also over here. We're just giving this Baron up. So unfortunately, you can't fight for the Baron because you're bot side. You managed to kill Fiora, but now the enemy team is pushing over here with Herald and with Baron buff. This is probably going to be the, the biggest turning point of the game right here. They are pushing right here, and because you burned alt and are no flash, splitting this Fiora, now you can't help your team defend the seeds. Kitty, I'm doing a pod review. You gotta be quiet. So they managed they managed to to recall. I don't know how they managed to stop that, but that's actually good for you though. Well either way, not being there I think gave them a baron. It still doesn't look like anything has happened though, yet, but they still have their baron buff. And now you have your sums again, though. So now let's see what happens here. I think I think you could have maybe contested that first Baron, and it would things would have been a lot better. But it's hard to say. Anyways, you're still splitting here. You get the parry. Hold on, I want to see what happened there.
All right, so you got hit by the parry. So right here. All right. You land the slow. You go for the spin. Oh no, you just walk up auto attack. All right. So when she does parry like this, You spin away. And now she's no parry, so you just walk up, take tower. Okay. I thought there might have been something else you could have done there, but that's honestly, that's fine. But now, they're seizing with Baron. You see, this is what's happening right here, though, okay? You are trying to split push against the enemy team's Baron buff. And I just don't think it's good. See, imagine if you were down here. Instead, you kill Fiora, but you don't have a wave. You have to wait. Meanwhile, Diana is just like ending the game. You're still trying to get an inhibitor. They already got an inhibitor and a nexus tower. Why? Yeah, this is this is not where you wanted to be. Like I understand you're really strong to like, and you want to split Fiora, but like this is not where you want to use your strength. This strength cost you all of this. My team engaged super fast on the Kate and got destroyed. I I understand that's what they did, but basically they're trying to they're trying to defend tier three towers. So, so what's, what's the reasoning then? So we, we wait, we wait. All right. Your mid kind of just goes in. So that was a bit of an int. So now your mid's down. Okay. You have a choice right here. You can keep splitting or you can maybe try to save this tower or stop the Diana from this tower. But either way, there's not, you can kind of look, you need to evaluate this, right? And define like what's worth, what are you getting from this, okay? If you split through here and dive the Fjord, are you able to get this inhibitor? And if so, can your team actually hold this? Yeah, but they can't defend Kate with Baron Buff. She's gonna take the tower if they don't, uh, turn and kill her. Kate is going to take your base. Uh, so, what, this is still a base trade? I don't think it's a base trade. I, I'm saying you needed to contest this. You can't outsplit Baron buff against a fed seeds ADC. Yeah. Well, it's just against Baron in general, you don't try to out seeds. Unless, like, your team can kind of hold, but your team is down. Your team is down. If your team was ahead, right? Say your team is ahead, okay? And the enemy team makes a one good team fight, and they get a Baron buff. So now it's a little even but your team is still strong, you could maybe ask your team to be like, hey guys, right? They're going to try sieging with Baron, but I can end the game, right? Because all your team has to do is hold, but your team can't hold this. Your support, level nine. Your AD carry, level 12. Your jungler, level 13. Their AD carry is level 13. Their jungle is level 13. Their thrust is level 11. Diana? Level 15, your mid, well, your mid's not on the map. Your mid's dead. Dude, you don't understand? She literally engaged? I know, well, I don't know why your mid engaged either. I thought your mid was your duo too. Like, I think... Like, going for this, this might be okay, right? Because they're going to take this no matter what. This, I don't know about. That's really unfortunate. But even then, all right, even with Cat alive, okay, you managed to get this brick. You need to defend this. These are what you want to defend. If these go under, right, that puts a lot of pressure down that you can't match from the enemy team. 
So yes, you're the the Katarina made a misplay here, but there's also a misplay happening here. I don't think this was where you wanted to be. You wanted to be here. Asking for your team to not int here is sometimes a bit too much. It happens. But they have Baron too. The best they could do was maybe... Like, like I, I don't understand what you're offering though. Like, do we just like let them walk up and just try to defend these? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, this is a, this is, this is like, yeah, a D one game. Okay. I just think, I just think splitting against the Baron is uh, like it was okay to take this right, but then this decision right here, this is, this is extremely greedy. Diana's right here getting solo time on this turret. Like, Diana can just... Diana is doing what you're doing, but it's better because nobody's answering her. Look, she doesn't care what's going on over here. Oh, my team's losing? Whatever. Diana's doing... What you just did. What you haven't actually done. And she did it twice as fast because she has Baron buff. So now, now you have to split up here. You didn't even get the inhibitor over here. That's not, that's not, yeah, this was not the best place to split, unfortunately. Also, Diana melts towers. Yeah, she made that tower look like it was grilled cheese and tomato. So, I think right here, splitting up to here was fine. I would have recalled. Why? Because your team sees that you're top. So they're going to be looking to engage. And they do. So now you have to come back and you have to try to defend this with two people down. And it's not going to happen. So, I think, I think so what we need to put in for some of the windows is Yeah, the the macro play was definitely a little off, just a little bit. Like you you had the lead, and I understand it's like finally feels great. Yay! I could kill Fiora. The world is mine. But you still have to help your team. This was definitely a time where we needed to see more Trindamir come out defending seeds. Yeah. Heck could not uh, engage randomly. I mean, th those things happen. Sometimes, because you, you're not also in, like, the same mind as them, right? Like, they, you're, they're looking at, like, they're just trying to, like, make the best of it. So something might might have looked good, right? Like, oh, my gosh, I can land that. This will be really good. But they don't have the full picture, right? You have to understand when, like, when you see it's forward, right, your team did not have any of this map coverage. Now, you didn't care because you were focused on this map coverage, which, oh, hey, I can cover because I can push a wave. But look at all this gray area over here. Your team had no control. Diana was able to move anywhere she wanted to, and that's a major, she was a major threat to your team. Diana was just popping people. Echo, popping people. Kate, just clicking on people that Diana's popping. He used ult to uh, 
Dai Fiora. Was it back up for the tower defense? Yeah, he was able to use it for the tower defense, but he didn't have... I don't think he had flash for even the tower defense, right? Let me see. Yeah, he didn't. Even, you didn't have flash for the tower defense because you flashed on the Fiora again. Yeah, this taking this tower, I think, was okay. But then afterwards, you have to look here and go, oh shit, they're trying to take our tier three. Don't don't trade inhibitors if your team is losing. Hold on, I gotta stop my cat one second. Skin with your fur coat over here. Ah. All right. See, I thought the inhibs would fall regardless of whether or not I came, so I kept pushing, which is a misplay. Yeah, you don't want to trade that anyway. Why would you see the thing is like if you thought you could okay say you thought you you couldn't defend the inhib though you at least have to like at that point try because you couldn't even get the inhib right Yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm looking at. It's mostly just just some just some simple macro misplay. Macro mistake is why I'm not selling. That's why none of us are challenger, dude. But once we keep working, I right, I gotta change it to something else because this fucking everybody stop watching is pissing me off. All right. <clears throat> so. Let's bring back the notes. All right. Wizdoos. Think about your laner, what your laner wants to do, and either deny it or answer to it. If you are once vital, do you walk away or fight her for it? Level 6 advantage was superb. She was still almost able to kite you, but you landed everything. That was good. You want to choose who you plan to make carefully. Don't make plays with feeding teammates. This is a little catch though, right? If you're trying to like drive and like ping your team to make the play, right? Then maybe it's good, okay? But like, if there's any like any risk, risk of it going south on lack of ability from teammate negates this. Do not count on your teammate to be there if he's already underperforming. Okay, do not play make with underperforming players. So. Base racing for inhibs is not good unless you're going to like win the game off of it. If you can win the game, then absolutely base race for inhib. But if you can't win the game, don't base race for inhib, okay?